We're super excited to share about the new franchise from Torn Banner. We're going into the horror space. No More Room in Hell 2. Absolutely terrifying co-op game with eight players about the zombie apocalypse. When I talked with the people here at Torn Banner, it felt like a natural kinship. Coming from making a source mod uh, that became a standalone game, much in the way that Chivalry did, and, and kind of going through this growing pangs in the process of finding your own way with your own idea and your own game. And it's a similarity, I think, between our shared heritage. Super fun for us to be taking on another franchise. I mean, with Chivalry, we were really kind of finding our way, figuring out what we're doing by making games. And with No Room in Hell 2, it's so much like what we would have done if we went for it, because it's real life setting. It's a grounded world, and it's like, what would actually happen if the zombie apocalypse happened today? The zombies poured through the walls, you just gotta grab what you have and find your way out of that problem. The map is large. Imagine playing through a zombie movie with your friends. It was exciting because a lot of us on our team are fans of the genre. So this was really our chance to re-angle and retell some of our favorite stories from films and graphic novels that we've consumed in our lives. One of the things that we set out to achieve was uh, a, the darkness that you can relate to in real life. A dark, not video game darkness, not video game nighttime, not even Hollywood movie nighttime. The ocean of darkness, we really wanted to wrap the player in this feeling where it's so dark and it's so high contrast that the player can't trust their surroundings. No Room 2 is a permadeath horror core game. A game where you start in the dark. A game where it's all about finding loot, gearing up, and finding more players as you pursue your goal in the center of the map, complete your mission, and ultimately save humanity. You're starting in the dark, it already gives you that tension, where, where's the enemy, where are my allies? And it allows us to make lighter resource, so everything that you do uh, attracts zombies to you and also lets your friends know where you're at. And the players slowly gear themselves up as they move through the map, finding more weapons and supplies until they finally reach the power plant where things have gone absolutely critical and it is hell on earth. The tension is at its highest point and the pressure can really be felt. The music, the ambience, the environment, the uh, imposing nature of the plant itself all come together to really make you feel the critical nature of the situation. We're making sure that this feels like an intense cooperative experience. You need some stakes. There needs to be consequences for failure and that's where Permadeath comes in where we got really inspired by some roguelike games and the notion of always re-rolling almost a new build and trying out new things with your character, getting invested in them, but then ultimately them meeting their fate and you restarting with then more options at your disposal. And at the same time, we wanted to balance it so it almost feels like it's a cliff that you're constantly climbing and it's just hard to stay on that cliff because you're losing the character after a couple of runs. But every time it's a challenge um, to get home safely. We wanted to capture that collaboration between players, making sure that it's really about uh, you finding help to go through the mission and working together. There are some social dynamics at play where there's no hostility between players, but you might have your own agenda, you might want to complete your own goals, what your group want to do. Uh, maybe there are competing strategies. The consequences of your actions, like socially relevant actions, making sure that that has a big impact on the match. So you're, you know, right in the middle of rural Pennsylvania. There's this power plant that, you know, the infrastructure is failing, it's malfunctioning, it's causing this ripple effect amongst you know regions in the rest of the map. You have an area of the map where the power plant malfunction has caused a sluice gate to overflow and that's kind of caused a flood in one area. And you have another region of the map where the malfunction at the power plant has caused electrical infrastructure to burst and cause wildfire that's taken out much of the forested area. All of the objectives are based on iconic movie horror scenes. So Players spend about half their time in the early match running through the woods in the darkness just looking for any civilization, like rural gas stations or cemeteries around a church in the swamp, and you have to restore the infrastructure there. So that it's actually a really dramatic effect where the map starts in almost total darkness, and as players complete objectives, they turn those lights on, which signals to other players where they are, and that's how they group up together. It's like co-op game with consequences. And the fun becomes, how long can I survive the zombie apocalypse?